Hey everybody, Matthew and Lee here from anyborgamy.com and welcome to another episode of the behind the scenes of the Def Watch, how Lee made the Def Watch orc models and a bit of their story to give you a preview of the upcoming Def Watch narrative campaign. Which is coming out near the end of September in the vault as part of our 10th year anniversary special. So pretty excited for that. We're actually going to be looking at two guys today. We're going to be looking at our demolition man, our demolition boy, or demolition death watch member, whatever you want to call him, as well as our commando. And so let's take a look a bit about their backstories. Now interestingly, the reason I wanted to do these two together is because um, they're opposites. <laughs> yeah. And they're even on opposite sides of the team. The demolitions guy is on the brutal team, whereas the commando is obviously more on the cunning team. And their rules reflect that, and their abilities really reflect that too. So starting with our demolitions fanatic, Zod Gob Dakasnik. The utter definition of unsubtle. Zod Gob was created with the basic genetics of a tank busta, but taken to a level of extremity that has made him utterly obsessed with anything that explodes. <laughs> Zod Gob finds intense pleasure in bringing countless stick bombs, rockets, mines, and his trusty rocket-propelled hammer to a fight. Zod Gob doesn't enjoy killing an enemy unless it involves explosives, and he constantly tinkers with them to get the biggest bang for his buck in every game. Zod Gob does have one unusual soft spot. Oh, we've got to show a squig. Squigs. Where other orcs see squigs as either a food source or a place to strap a bomb and attack the enemy, Zod Gob sees the potential for loyal friends. He spends <laughs> countless hours training his squigs to deliver mines to the enemies without getting hurt, which is ironic as you watch the actual narrative campaign. <laughs> his favorite squig, Bomb Fetcha, which is this man right here, or this squig right here. Stick him out front. There's Bomb Fetcha. Has served him well and brought explosive death to many enemies. So that is Zog's go that is Zod Gob Dakasnik. So we actually have a squig here. Now the squig's just a squig, though, right? It's just a squig. Yeah. A squig. But you, um, you have a stick bomb. Uh, sorry, my hand's in the way for a second there. But the stick bomb comes out, so he's able to carry it because there's actually a rule where he delivers the bomb. And then we have a few of the markers, which you want to you show a couple of those or all of those. So we've got uh, and those. Got these. Those are stick bombs on bases, obviously. And then, and then the mines. We got some mines as well. What are the mines from? Let's just go over that really quick. Those are just tank buster bombs from one of the orc screws. Okay, so they're just. And these are just double headed stick bombs. Yeah, so it, you actually stuck the second head on them? Yeah. Essentially. So the, the once again, the rules for both of these are in the description and below for both of these guys. And um, one of the things that the demolition guy can do, as you can probably guess, is he can lay mines. And Bomb Fetcher can go up and lay mines too, and then come back and get another mine and go out and lay another mine. And then, he, as you can see from his big, uh, his big pack there, sorry, we got a little off camera here. He can detonate them selectively, which is kind of cool. So that's him. Now, before we talk about how the models were made, let's talk about our commando as well. Now, the commando obviously is on the cunning side of the team. Hey, this is Nobork, Da Sneaky Git, Grimscap. <laughs> Orcs aren't really known to be subtle. This is, this is what I'm talking about. These are the opposites. No Bork breaks that mold. So where, where um, Zogdog, Zodgob is like the most unsubtle orc next to the Mega Knob, like the two of them probably are like the most unsubtle. Even like the Storm Boy is subtle compared to these guys. Uh, no Bork is actually incredibly subtle and he's just, it's just kind of weird. Like there are commandos already with orcs, but Face Stompa wanted every tool to be available to the orc Death Watch. And he knew one of these tools would be an orc capable of true infiltration and general sneakiness, not like orc sneakiness where they think they're being sneaky, but actually be really good at that. Unlike other orcs, Nobork is unusually calm and collected. Even though he is quite large, he is capable of total silence as he moves and can fit into the most impossibly small places to get an advantage over the enemy. Basically, he'll like pop out of, the, out of nowhere and you'll be like, how did you fit there? You were enormous. You are bigger than an orc, which is already bigger than a person. And yet he'll just like, whoop! Like, there was um, Beverly Hills Ninja. You ever <laughs> seen that movie? No. Or, I don't remember the name. Like Chris Farley. Yeah. He, he comes. He's oh, like. He, he comes from him. behind a pole, and he just like kind of appears. And he's not. not and a the, thin the pole guy. is like this big, and he's he's obviously several it's Chris times Farley. Bigger. Look him up. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and he guy. comes from behind a pole, and he's just like, I'm right here. When he finally masters how to be a ninja. So it's like a Looney Tunes, just like. 
Exactly. Frank. This this is what this guy would do. He would hide behind one of those poles. You wouldn't you wouldn't see him. <laughs> and he would also be like, boom, here I am. Um, which is very scary. Very scary that an orc could actually hide on you. Play hide and seek with an orc and he actually wins. And you're just like, whoa, I don't think I want to fight this guy. So, uh, <laughs> so he can fit into the most impossibly small places to get an advantage over the enemy, either up close and personal or his favorite from a well thought out sniper position. Nobork once spent three straight weeks crammed in a vent with nothing to eat except any rat-like creature that passes away as he prepared to assassinate a very hard to get imperial governor. And not only did he get his target, he did it without killing anybody else and without being seen by even a servo skull. Most orcs are put off by his un-orc-like demeanor, but the Death Watch have grown to appreciate his particular skill set and to trust in his logical approach to almost any situation. So you're gonna see like his rules, he's actually able to infiltrate, so he, um, just like a lot of the reinforcement stuff can kind of pop up, except he's six inches instead of nine inches, but he can actually disappear and then pop up somewhere else and disappear and pop up. And whenever he appears, all his weapons have a bonus. And he terrifies people, so they get leadership, uh, they're negative to their, their leadership whenever they take damage from him. Especially if he's, if he's actually popped up out of nowhere that turn that's even more. He's Orc Batman? Yeah, he's Orc yeah. Batman. Yeah. He's like, why are you here? <laughs> <laughs> and except he's, he kills, whereas Batman doesn't kill. Like, yeah, he whatever. just memes. <laughs> <laughs> brings bones and, and maims people. But anyway, yeah, so he's an orc Batman, essentially. And um, we'll take a look at the models in just a second, but essentially he's got his bear trap knife and his uh, ridiculously huge sniper rifle, which is a, a very... Sniper cannon? A sniper cannon, uh, which, uh, is a, is n which is a very unusual thing to have for an orc. So let's, let's take a look at the models. We've already, we already looked at the squig and the mine, so we're going to pull them apart because there's not much more to talk about with them. They're cool, but um, pretty straightforward. Let's start with Zodgob. So he's still the, is he still an ogren body? Yeah, they're, okay. they're pretty much all of them well, except he, two. He's, he's not an ogren body though. Yeah, he is. He is? Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's the pain boy, that's, or the uh, weird boy that's not. That's yeah, right. I'm the pain boy. Right, okay, so let's, let's take and a look at him. So he's an ogren body. Now my instructions to you for this guy were I want him head to toe <laughs> explosives. <laughs> and I think he delivered on that. So um, walk us through, because I'm actually I actually don't even know where some of these bits are from. I don't even recognize some of them. So tell well, us what they are. He's an ogren, ogren body like all of the other ones. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, then he has his sacks of stick bombs, which are from the truck kit. So the truck kits actually have like little yeah, you can like sacks full of stick bombs. Yeah, that's convenient. Yeah, and these are ogren grenades. Are they supposed to be like one on their belt kind of thing? Yeah. So you actually took like a bunch of grenades for a bunch of ogrins and just yep. glued them to his arm. So we've got like a brace of grenades. And what then hold on, what about this one up here? Which one? These stick bombs right there. Those are from the knob, knob box. Is that two stick bombs and you put an elastic band? No, that's just. Well, that's that actually what it looks that's like. What it looks like. Okay, so continue. Uh, and then we have the mines, the same mines as we have over here. Strapped a couple to his back. And there's one over here for. Easy access. Now the head is actually a storm boy head. So one of the storm boys is actually gripping a stick bomb in his mouth. Yeah. Which is perfect. And I just like saw it and that was probably one of the first bits I grabbed. I was going through stuff. I was like, yeah, that's gotta yeah. be the demolition guy. I'm yeah, like, of yeah. course. And he actually one of his um, weapons is all the orcs have stick bombs, but he has lots of stick bombs. So when he throws them, they're 3d6 instead of d6. Because he's just like, <laughs> chuck, 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 throwing stick bombs. He's got like a sack of stick bombs. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, what about this uh, the, the Acme? The plunger? The plunger thing. Um, <clears throat> well, the plunger is actually an old Imperial Guard uh, hunter killer missile. A hunter killer missile? Yeah, because it used to, have, used to have this long box where you put the missile in. Okay, so, but this, so this part right here? I just assembled the box. Cut it like no, maybe a third, and use that as the plunger box. Okay, and what about the plunger itself? Because that thing looks like it's on the guy's hand. So yeah, that hand is a uh, ogre kingdom. Uh, what are they called? Beast claws. And it's supposed to be holding reins. Oh. But it, it just oh, it looks like a handle for a plunger, and then it's just a bit of plastic card stick. And I of course, right? Piece yeah. of cake. Yeah. But it w even the iconography, you added that, right? Or was that a part of the box? No, already? I added that. You added that. So that's just a piece of plastic card that you yep. cut out? And then what about this little uh, that's pipe? That's from one of my favorite model kits, the Matrix Battlewalker thing. 
the Mac? You haven't seen the Matrix? I've seen the Matrix, but yeah, the oh, wait, this is actually from the toy. Yeah, from the toy. Oh, okay. I thought you meant there's something in 40k that looked like the Matrix. No, it's okay. actually from that toy. I've used on these two guys. I actually used a bunch of stuff from the, from that kit. So it's just a. It's just a hose, but it's got like the the L shape. Yeah, that worked really well for there. Yeah. It goes off. And it just trail, really, trails off. <laughs> and it's like use your imagination. And then we've got his rocket propelled hammer on the back. What is that for? Is that That's just a tank old hammer? school. An old school what? That's an old school storm boy jump pack. Oh, that's, that's a jump pack. Yep. And then what's the? Those are from what's two, the hilt? That's from two big choppers. So two big choppers with a storm boy rocket. Yep. An old school yep. storm boy it's rocket. That's actually metal. So this is a storm boy rocket propelled hammer. A hammer. <laughs> that smashes the guys. Now unlike a tank hammer, it's not one use only because tank hammers are really dumb. And that basically, once you hit, you remove the tank buster, but you do a bunch yeah. of mortal wounds. Whereas this thing, he can do an overhead swing, which is potentially going to do mortal wounds and actually hurt himself as well. But it's totally worth it. Or he can do a broad swing and just like, blah, hit. it does two attacks per attack. So he's really good in close combat. He's deadly with his bombs. He flies around like a fanatic. Oh, he's, he's nuts. <laughs> he's absolutely nuts. So let's talk about um, Nobork, the commando. the commando. Now, this is actually my favorite one. I don't know why. Just he's the character that he has? Yeah. He and he also looks different than all the rest. He's not painted any white whatsoever. Yeah, there's no white on him. He's all camoed. But I don't know why he's my favorite. It just is. But he was, he was fun to make, because he's pretty basic, but still. Well, it still took you some time to find all the little bits that you wanted for him, right? Yeah. Like, this an ogre in body. What's the face? What's the head? The face is from, oh, what's his name? Snickrot? Snickrot, yes. The he's a commando. Yeah, the, the commando character. Yes, I think that's Snickrot. So that's his head. That's his head, and that's his backpack too. On his on a proper body. So it's just a ba so you didn't make this backpack at all. No. Even any of the extra big old. Well, the extra bullets are from the Matrix. Okay, so those are again. from the Matrix yeah. Walker guy again. I have like streams of them. Because those so. are huge bullets. Yeah. So each of those is one of those rounds that he fires. But other other than that, the backpack is just out of the box. It's it's a pretty good bit. Yeah, that's actually pretty detailed. It's got like the grappling hook mm -hmm. and the and the rope, stick bombs, and stick bombs, and the little, little knife. And yeah, that's really neat. Yeah. What about the uh, bear trap knife? What's that from? That's from one of the the ogre kingdom. What what you call it? Beast, beast claws. Beast claws. We the beast claw raiders. I just saw it on one of uh, Josh's ogres and I was like, that would be really funny as a commando weapon. Yes, definitely. Because it goes up and claws people with it and then it Yeah, it actually has like a, a bear trap on it. Just, yeah. Just, ouch. <laughs> yeah, I actually named the weapon bear trap knife. Yeah. So it does a little So it just grabs you and schnick. Yeah, it just does, it just multiple damage. It doesn't, need to, it doesn't need to swing it, that's the thing. Yeah, you just, just like crunch. <laughs> and then you got more of the bullets on his front. Yep. Yeah. And well, what about the gun? How'd you make the gun? Now the gun was interesting because we talked about it. I remember talking about it. We wanted to have like a big orky sniper rifle. And I tried maybe two or three different bits to try to get the look. And then I was talking to Chris, so I was like, yeah, so I wanted to be like the size of an auto cannon, but I don't want to be an auto cannon. And then I was just like Wait a second. Heavy bolter with auto cannon barrel. <laughs> of course, right? And a scope. <laughs> so that's basically what it is. So that's a heavy bolter barrel. What about this down here? This little that's contraption? from the flash kit. Kit. I used a bunch of those because they have like these these clutches right. on their guns. But then the sprue actually comes with a bunch of extra ones that you can just put on the guns wherever. Right. So he needed a trigger, so I just used one of those. So heavy bolter base flash kit thing. What about the scope? That's plastic card. So you made the scope from yep. scratch with plastic card. And then auto cannon. And then auto cannon that you just whoop, that you just cut off. Yeah. And uh, stuck on the end there. Any other notable bits on him that you can think of? No, but there's one conversion because if you notice, you put him next to the other guy again. He's a bit shorter than everyone. Right. It's because he's kneeling. So I actually took the ogre legs, ogre legs, cut them up, reposed them, and green stuff the gaps. So he's actually on one knee. Awesome. Which I think gives him a more like surveying look, and that might be why he's my favorite because he has a lot of character in him. Yeah, well, he, he definitely has that. Like they're, all, he's they're not, all. He's not doing anything combaty. Right. He's just there. He's just looking. Yeah. He's hiding in the corner. 
looking out at what yeah, he's put about like to kill. Yeah, on top of a tree, like somewhere. And yeah, like exactly. Now that's why he's scary. He is scary for that reason. He can pop out just he's six, inches, six inches away from the enemy, and then getting a charge in is a lot easier with his bear trap knife. Or he can, he's got this special rule that he can always shoot at characters, even if they're not the closest, as yeah. most snipers do. And he has lots but of But you don't want him shooting your characters, though. No, definitely. no. He's got a few options for his gun, too, that but makes that him sniper rifle takes out a tank. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, essentially. It's, it's a, the <laughs> penetrator round. The idea of the old Vindicator, not like the new one, which is no longer as good at shooting. Good strength 10, good AP, multiple damage. Yep. And um, does even more against monsters and vehicles. So, pretty scary. So that is Nobork and Zodgob, our demolitions guy and our commando. So basically tank buster and commando in a case right here, a cast right there. And all of this, of course, is for our Death Watch narrative campaign, which will be coming out later in September for our 10th year anniversary special. I know I said this before, but I just want to get that in there so you remember when it is. Links in video description below for the rules, as well as our Facebook it's page. It's our birthday YouTube. soon. Yeah, it's our birthday soon. It's going to be awesome. We're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have other stuff, too. But that'll be one of them coming to the vault. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for more of the behind the scenes and more of the how we made or how Lee made these orc models. You can say we. I just, the royal we, right? <laughs> how many wargaming made these models? <laughs> Happy wargaming. Orcs are too weak. I can rebuild them. I have the technology. I have the capability to make the first elite fighting force. Better, stronger, faster, the Death Watch.